Welcome to BioBalance HealthCast. I'm Dr. Kathy Maupin. And I'm Brett Newcomb. And today we are continuing our discussion over the last couple of podcasts uh, about medical issues. And this issue that we're going to talk about today is uh, an issue that we discuss in the book that we're writing called I Want What She's Having. Uh, and and it, most people do want what we're having. Most people do. <laughs> and the, the issue is the issue of sarcopenia. And sarcopenia is a relatively new diagnostic label in the medical profession, but it is something that as the uh, population, the baby boomer population bulge comes into uh, uh, late middle age. It, mean, uh, it means your muscles are going away, yes. that your muscles are dissolving and the, all of the The incredible shrinking thereof. baby <laughs> boomer. <laughs> baby boomer, yeah. yeah. Shrinking, not shrinking this way because most mm -hmm. people are getting fatter, but their muscles are going away. Yeah, I went to a party the other day <laughs> for a bunch of teachers that I used to teach high school with many years ago, and one of them looked around the room and said, well, there are fewer of us than there once were, but we take up more space. <laughs> <laughs> Sadly, but that is funny. Yeah. <laughs> that is funny. So, so sarcopenia, what, what is it? Sar sarcopenia is, I mean, we can have sarcopenia at younger ages from diseases, meaning mm -hmm. our muscles can atrophy. They can get thinner and smaller and, and we can be um, less strong. But most people get sarcopenia as we get older. And if you've noticed, look at your family, look at your parents or your grandparents. Usually as they hit, they get into their 60s and 70s, they start looking not skinny, but littler. Their muscles shrink, and, and they don't look strong, and they don't look robust anymore. Solid. And solid. They, mm -hmm. they look flabby, and they, right. and they don't get around as much. So sarcopenia is truly just the loss of muscle, but it implies so many things, and it leads to many va various difficulties down the line in our lives that end us up in nursing homes. So, so, so as you get older, I mean, isn't it inevitable that you lose muscle and you lose mass and people shrink and, and you know, the, the curve of their spine change? I mean, isn't all that stuff inevitable? It's inevitable if you do nothing. Okay. If you do nothing, then that's normal, what they call aging and what I call testosterone deprivation. Okay. So men and women both lose their testosterone, women in their 40s, we've said that before, men in their 50s or 60s. And as you hit a critical point, your muscles respond by not growing when you exercise and not responding to the normal neurologic stimulation. So you, your muscles shrink. If I give someone back pure testosterone, mm -hmm. they revert back to the healthy muscles that they had in the very beginning in their 30s when they were healthy. So does testosterone build muscles or does it facilitate the building of muscles? It actually builds muscles, but it does require that you eat enough protein. It mm -hmm. does require that you have exercise. Mm -hmm. You know that some people can be quite sedentary and still build some muscle, but for you to have a healthy level of muscle, you have to move around. You have to lift things. You have to exercise. You have to use weights or rubber bands or something right. to build muscle. Right. That's that's very important now. To when, keep keep your muscles from atrophying. Right. And yeah. to and you have to build them if you started to atrophy, you mm -hmm. have to build Go them back. back. Right. That's the whole idea of rehab. And the reason rehab for injuries, not rehab for drugs, right. but rehab for injuries doesn't always work is because we tend to give people the same exercises they had when they were thirty when they're 70 or 80, well, they can't build the muscle. They can't get their balance back because they don't have any muscle to hold them. So, so we're talking about a couple different things then. And years ago, I had a friend who had a knee problem and his knee was stabilized for some months. And they came in with a, an electronic TENS unit mm -hmm. and put it on his calf mm -hmm. and, and they put electricity through his calf and it would make his muscles exercise. Mm -hmm. And that was to prevent the atrophy of those leg muscles. But he had testosterone. So but he had, and that's the so other thing. Worked. So he had testosterone. But if you do that to an 80 year old, and it they won't don't work. have testosterone, it won't work. Right. And, and for me, this is a huge picture. This is not just, oh, we don't have muscles, we don't look good, we don't get around as fast. This is the, one of the big things that causes our bodies to fail as we get older, and it goes from no muscle to becoming frail, imbalanced, falling, breaking things, going to the hospital, ending up in a nursing home, or not being able to get out of the hospital or nursing home 
because something else happens because you're so frail, like you get pneumonia, right? Or you get a blood clot because you're not moving around, and then you can't get out of bed. So all of this leads to being incapacitated, and half of our, our all our baby boomers are going to be stuck in a nursing home. That's expensive for us personally, Absolutely. and it's a loss to society for all of the baby boomers who have been working on being productive. They can't be productive if they're in a nursing home. Well, and if we all go into nursing homes at the same time, they're going to have to build warehouses. I know, and our, and our children can't pay for that. Right. Who can pay for constant care for all of us? We need to look at the long picture. Lots of Velcro. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Brett thinks we can Velcro everybody against the wall, Just you know, and that'll make them happy. But that, that's not what we need. No. We, we need our muscles back. We need to be able to balance, <clears throat> and then we can get out of wheelchairs and, and walkers. You I, have a case. I do. I do. I, yes. I, I, love, I love this patient, and, and he and his wife uh, have both been my patients, but his wife was my patient first. Mm -hmm. And she got her testosterone, and she looks more than 20 years younger than she is, and she's in her 80s. And she is active, she gardens, she, because she has her muscles, and she's balanced, and she doesn't fall, and her bones are thick, and her mind works. Well, her husband was doing very well for someone his age, and he was in his 80s. He climbed ladders, he maintained a bunch of property, so he had a very active life in his 80s. So he had... Um, he had a knee replacement, mm -hmm. and he'd had one five years before, and he, re and he, we, he had done great re returning to activity, but this time he was in his 80s. He'd lost enough muscle, and he didn't have enough testosterone to rebuild his muscles back, so he could not get out of a wheelchair, and this is the kind of guy, it would be like me being confined to a wheelchair or being confined to anything. That's, <laughs> or, that or would be bad. Or even being asked to be still. <laughs> forever. Yes. <laughs> That'd be bad for everyone around me and for me. And so he he was not going to be a guy that was going to be able to tolerate that and contain and continue a life at all. So his daughter, who's my nurse practitioner, asked if I'd be able to treat him, even though he was in his 80s. Mm -hmm. And of course, I mean, he that was the only way he was getting out of that chair. So I did. A, was, but you're reluctant to do it to begin it in the 80s because it's not optimal. Well, in the 80s, there are so many downsides that we don't have before 80. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it's very hard to figure dosage. Some people need a lot of testosterone after 80 because they're insensitive to it. Some people need very little, and then they get too much, and then, of course, they get priapism, which means, sadly, that they have a, an erection for weeks, and that's not a good thing for them. It is. Painful. It sounds, you know, great, but it's not. It's terrible. So that's, I have to avoid both of those, mm -hmm. you know, those uh, extremes. So I want him to have effect, but I don't want him to have side effects. So we were very careful about how we dosed him. And she inserted the pellets for us. And I'm telling you, it was amazing. He had had rehab over and over again. Nothing worked. He was out of his wheelchair in a month. He was using a walker because you always work your way up. He had built so much muscle, he could just get out of his wheelchair and use a walker. Then another month, he was out of the walker using a cane. Mm -hmm. And and another month, he was out climbing on ladders again, doing everything he had done before. And now, of course, his wife is smiling. And we don't have to discuss that anymore because everyone understands what that is. He's bringing her flowers, and my nurse practitioner goes, I don't want to know. But <laughs> but that's great. I want to be... I want to be 85 yeah. and have my and husband have bringing all that me going flowers. On in your life. Absolutely. Yeah, and and have there's no reason why people. I can't. want to be 65 and have that. <laughs> okay, well, we can work on that. Yeah, <laughs> well, but but that's part of the issue. I mean, intimacy, sexual intimacy, is is a vibrant and critical part of life. And if you don't do something about that, in the same way that you don't do something about muscle mass mm -hmm. or uh, balance or all of these cascade issues. Mm -hmm. I mean, whatever, the, you, you try to figure out what's the trigger point. Where does all of this start? And your contention is that everybody knows somebody elderly. Everybody knows that they shrink, that they get small, that they have balance problems. They start leaning over. They start walking slow. They're, not, they're fragile and they're not balanced. Mm -hmm. Then they crash. They break something. They go into rehab. Depending on where they are on this cycle that you've just described, they can come back from rehab or not. And so the question is, well, is it the fall that kills them? Because they die. They get pneumonia, they get blood clots, mm -hmm. they die. 
Uh, we in our family have had a couple of elderly relatives in their 80s and 90s who have experienced this in the last year. Mm -hmm. and, and we watched this happen. And, and it's a what, terrible thing to watch as uh, well as experience. Yeah. And, and they are frightened and afraid and angry and then passive. And then they, you, you can see them get ready to die. They just give up. Uh, and what you're saying is that if we can identify the trigger for mm -hmm. the cascade and replace it early, most of us will avoid most of that. Right. And if we don't do it early, and still identify it and do something, then some of us can recover. Right, that's true. Some of us can. And sometimes yeah. the damage is so bad by 80 that you just can't bring people back. Like my, my mother had had um, all of her vertebra crushed, just mm -hmm. kind of got smaller, shrunk and crushed, and, and then gave her terrible pain on her nerves so that there was no rebuilding that back. Mm -hmm. You know, not, no amount of hormone, no amount of Fosamax, no amount of anything was going to build that, but we could have prevented it had she like took my advice, but she didn't yes. because I'm her kid. But you know, everybody else does, but she didn't. The, the prophet is not listened to in his own country. That's true, ever. that's true. But, but th there's so much pain and, and time lost and productivity lost because people are incapacitated by their loss of muscle. Now, just think if you had, if you know that you have a very tiny leak in your, in your roof mm -hmm. and you know that and you don't want your whole house to be ruined by the next storm, and you know it's just going to get worse. It's going to get bigger. It's going to cause more damage, first the attic, then the first top floor. You know that if you go to that leak and you fix that one thing, mm -hmm. then you're not going to have to rewire, replumb, rebuild, re, re insulate all of, those things. all of those things. So what I'm saying is we know that the first step in sarcopenia is loss of testosterone. It also affects our growth hormone, but growth hormone is not the first step. It's testosterone. So testosterone has to be replaced. Plug up that hole first. Then you don't have to rebuild your house. It, Kathy, what, part of the reason that you do these podcasts and part of the reason that you're write, writing the book is to get the message out, to get the word out. Because one of the things that happens with the elderly, and, and in the book you describe this in some detail, when you discuss the events of the cascade. So you, you talk about loss of testosterone, then you talk about issues with inflammation and mm -hmm. the side effects that that occurs, mm -hmm. uh, joints, uh, bones, brittleness of mm -hmm. bones, l less oxygen in the brain, less uh, acuity in thinking and mm -hmm. deciding, more fragility. I mean, there's just a whole structure of things that you describe that you attribute all beginning with the loss of testosterone. And they do, and I have backup for all that. I had several patients the research come in, in the to me yes. yesterday, which, was, which I have to address, mm -hmm. who had been to good doctors who had said, there's no research that says that you need testosterone, and then there's no research that says mm -hmm. that you should take estrogen. Well, I have binders and binders and binders full of medical research that says you should take it, and it prevents all of these things, but it's like if you don't take a temperature, you don't find a fever. So if they never look for the research, if they don't do a med line on it, if they don't look in the right place. Or if they're not trained in medical specialties all they that have to do is look. general practitioners are not trained in. Right, yeah. but still, they should know this. They're dealing with people with loss of muscle and they, people who can't recover from their falls. They should be scientists and looking for the research, but no, they just go, it's not there because I've closed my eyes and I'm not looking at it. Or it wasn't told to them when they were a resident. Well, it's not about being a resident. Or didn't come in the monthly update from the drug company. Right. That's right. So, yeah. like, one of the things that's, that I, I, haven't, I didn't address in this chapter, but I want to mention is that we are attacking osteoporosis with a drug that is not as good at building bone as, a, as, uh, as estrogen and testosterone but we're attacking it with a very expensive drug that builds kind of brittle bone and has lots of side effects. So that means on this continuum, they went, oh, somewhere in here people break bones, so we're gonna stop that. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not, the br it's not the thin bones that make you break your hip, it's the fall. Mm -hmm. Well, the fall comes because lack of testosterone s decreases your balance. So people who have lost their testosterone, n normally, if we're holding something, we fall forward. People who have lost testosterone, fall backwards. They've lost their balance. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a normal way to recover from, from an imbalance. The, we all the have imbalance. The prior perceptors in the brain that regulate balance yeah. go. 
Right, proprioception is gone, and that's like what divers have, that where they know where they are in space. Well, everyone has that. We know where we are in space even if we close our eyes, mm -hmm. but you lose that when you lose your testosterone. It's something in the brain and the ear, and, and, and it's, that's been proven as well, and there's lots of articles about it, but that's the first thing. So why are we not fixing that? Instead of fixing the bone that breaks when we fall, why don't we stop the fall? So that's, that's my, my mission is, let's bring it back to square one. The most efficient thing in the world, just like plugging up the one little hole in your roof, the efficient thing is fix the thing, replace the thing that's missing that then cascades into all these different things. Physical uh, disintegration, mental disintegration, cancers, illness, uh, inability to live your life and, and be productive. Not If you can't think, you can't go to work. If you can't walk, you can't go to work right. usually, unless usually. you have a wheelchair or mm -hmm. if, you've, if you've gone through lots of lots of medical care to get some way to get to work. Mm -hmm. And you need lots of people to help you. Well, well and, and to complete the circle, we, we started this conversation today talking about obesity. And <laughs> one of the reasons or one of the contributing factors to obesity uh, in late middle age is when the muscles begin to diminish and are replaced with fat, fat. cells. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and so you can exercise the heck out of yourself, but if you don't have the muscle tone or the ability to, to build muscles back because you don't have testosterone, mm -hmm. then that fat is just going to sit there and get heavier. Yeah, and it's going to make more fat because fat doesn't burn calories. Fat was meant for storage. Mm -hmm. So it was meant to store energy so that when we were fed in the summer but not fed in the winter, that we could keep, we didn't have to eat every single minute, we could keep some of our storage as fat, we'd use the fat, and then we could find food. But we're still the same physiology, the same chemistry as we were when we were first made, but now we have constant food and, when, and we have constant eating, so we make fat and as our muscles go down and our muscles decrease, we stop burning calories. Muscles burn calories every minute of the day. After you hit this certain point, you can tell because when you mm. wake up, you're warm. Your muscles have been keeping you warm, burning calories to stoke your fire, and that's from testosterone. And when your muscles start doing that, you're burning calories while you sleep. Mm -hmm. So you're not gonna be just gaining more weight every year you're going to be using that muscle to, to lose fat and become lean. So you need exercise, right. but you need testosterone to make the exercise work. And, and you need a good healthy diet with protein in it. And if you don't have the testosterone and all of these little things start to break, you become heavier, more fragile, more sedentary, less mobile. All of that can be significantly impacted by replacing testosterone. Absolutely, and I don't want it, anyone to think that I want to live forever because I don't. I just don't want to live sick for a long right. period you of time. Live well. I want to live well and functional and then be gone. And that's what we want for everybody else. And that's right. And that's the way society will heal itself with all the monetary woes it has with medicine, is to keep people out of nursing homes and out of the hospital and in their own homes taking care of themselves. It's quality of life. It's what God, I'm sure, would like us to be. We're not good instruments of his work unless we're, unless we are Functional. well. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so if you have questions or comments or thoughts about our conversation today or any of our conversations on these podcasts, you can contact us directly and we will respond to you. You can contact Kathy. You can go to my, you can go to our website at biobalancehealth.com. You can email us at podcast at biobalancehealth.com or you can call my office to uh, make an appointment or get a, a packet, a new patient packet at 314-993-0963. Or you can reach me at brettnewcomb.com.